This is Justin of the Rack Pack Comic Podcast here at Mini MegaCon with Jeff Parker, the writer of uh, Agents of Atlas and soon to be Thunderbolts coming up. So, hey, Jeff, how are you enjoying the uh, convention so far? This is a great show. This has really turned out good. Yeah. Uh, Justin, are you related to Simon Pegg? You know, actually, that is something I've always wanted to research. I am Irish. I know he's a little Irish. Uh, I believe so. Um, I just need to. Maybe I made enough money at this convention to go track him down. I don't know. Okay, good. Well, let's do that. Yeah. So, uh, so we're huge admirers of your work at our podcast. Huge admirers of your work. Um, so tell me about kind of how you got into uh, comics. I started as an artist uh, back in the early to mid 90s. Uh, as I was coming out of college, I was an English major. Uh, cue my dad grumbling because uh, what did I spend that money for? Because you're not doing anything with literature or writing or anything. So anyway, I, I at that time though, it's much easier to get work as an artist because uh, no one's going to read your scripts. They're too long. But they'll look at your art and they can tell if you know what you're doing right away. So I started doing that, showing my art around at conventions. Uh, I ended up joining Artemis Studios back in North Carolina originally. Oh. It, it, people may remember Mike Waringo, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Richard Case, and uh, Chuck Boykevich, Scott Hampton, a lot of people in that. Casey Jones, who's here, who yeah. I'm staying with this weekend. Um, He's doing a Rocketeer sketch for me. Oh, are you doing the Rocketeer? Yeah, that, that, Rocketeer. Was, that was a good request. Yeah, man. Well, uh, uh, R.I.P. Dave Stevens, one of the yeah, great, uh, uh, one of the greatest artists to hit the medium. And always wanted to meet him. You know, I was. Uh, he was he was very inspirational to me early on. I remember uh, he came to a show in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I nervously went up with my pictures of the yeah, Rocketeer exactly, yeah. and some adventure stuff, and he liked it, and he invited me to come out like when I was going to be in San Diego, uh, to come up to L.A. and everything. He actually took little me up to the oh, at man. that time. Remember, Rocketeer was. Uh, uh, in Disney Adventures magazine. Yes, yes it was. Yep. And uh, so I went up, and this is me. I, I think uh, it was uh, Marv Wolfman and Lynn Wayne were both working there at yeah. the company as editors. And I showed my art and everything. They didn't really have anything for me, but everybody encouraged me. And, and Dave took me out for enchiladas. Oh, and I was wow. like, oh, and I was like, that. that was really great. And, it's nice and stuff yeah. like uh, people like him and Al Williamson really encouraged me early on. And uh, so anyway, yeah. a few years I'm, I'm drawing comics and stuff. And then I moved out to Los Angeles, and I ended up working in animation for a little bit. I worked on a cartoon, uh, The Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot. Yes, yeah. That's really so I storyboarded cool. that. And I worked on uh, various, like, music videos, things like that. And uh, I ended up, while, uh, meanwhile, I was working on, let's see, for yeah, visuals, I, I was working on The Interman, my yeah. graphic Great novel book. adventure. Great book, by the way. Thank you. Love it. And, um, and when that after that came out, then people realized that uh, I might be able to write. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Mark Panicha from Marvel uh, called me because they were they had stopped the Marvel Age line and they were starting up Marvel Adventures, where they wanted to do <coughs> just self. The main thing was he wanted someone who could do self-contained stories. Cool. That uh, didn't rely on knowing a lot of continuity. So I, they gave me a shot at doing. Uh, what was the first one I did? I, I believe it was. Uh, Oh yeah, it was the Spider-Man Human Torch uh, story called cool. Goom, Goom Got Game, <laughs> where I brought in Goom, who had who had been learning uh, how to speak uh, English completely from like Yo MTV raps and wow. uh, and, and NFL Today and it's stuff all the kids like are that. Learning nowadays, no big deal. Yeah, yeah so Goom yeah. comes in all gangsta talking and everything. Yeah. That was that was my intro to Marvel, and everybody let me stay. And then and the next thing you know, I'm just always writing something or another. I'm, uh, I'm this weekend, I'm finishing off uh, World War Hulk's Alpha, cool. which is going to be the kickoff to the big World War Hulk's event. Jeff Loeb and Greg Pack yep. are writing. Yep, I'm pretty excited. I'm I'm excited to see Pack back on the books. I know he was doing Hercules for a while, but now I'm really excited to see him back on oh the Hulk yeah. books. He hasn't missed a beat. It was it, I was at that the 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 Hulk summit, uh, where it's mainly us freeloading food and talking yeah. about the Hulk. How would Hulk <laughs> smash this? Yeah. You know, and uh, Greg's just a he's like an idea machine he just cool. kicks out one good thing after another yeah, he, he definitely gave me the most interesting hulk story i've read in years i mean other than peter davis stuff i really got captured yeah, into that Planet hulk was terrific yeah. well you said you're you said you storyboarded do you use storyboarding a lot when you're doing a book like ages of atlas because you got a lot of characters you're kind of juggling is that something you use a lot or i i've been lucky with atlas that i've been working with really some of the top guys like uh gabriel hardman yeah. who works in movies all yep. the time anyway like he's he, he, m think of most of the big action movies, and he's uh, storyboarded them. Cool. Um, so he knows how to block out a scene with a lot of characters. Yeah. 
And Carlo Pagolayan is a monster. You know, he's, he's from the Philippines. So it just seems like he's naturally going in with all these great artists that he kind of follows in the tradition of. Um, once in a while, though, I will doodle out something because when I just think, okay, this is a kind of complex little setup I've got here. Here's what I mean. And they like that because it saves them a lot of time yeah. or whatever. I don't do it too much, but uh, I have to do it more with newer artists. Yeah. But guys like that, and, yeah, they know what to do. As long as I don't screw up my end of it, they usually can can pick up the ball. Now, I know. I know for a fact you're a big fan of science fiction. So I know King Kong. I'm a huge fan of King Kong as well. You and I kind of talked. You know, I kind of talked about a little bit of uh, my father. M11 got my father into uh, comics. That's so cool. Yeah, we were talking about because uh, he likes the day the earth stood day still. Day still. Good. So, do you, I mean, so it, is that something? The original day the earth stood still, by the way. We're not <laughs> talking about that thing Keanu Reeves. Is yeah, not the Keanu Reeves. I heard rumors on Newsarama that um, Agents of Atlas is actually ending as a title and getting his backup in Hercules. Is that is that happening or? It's, no, it's only a temporary thing. Okay, what's, actu good. what's actually happening is we're just going to. They want to try to capitalize on all the good reviews and press we've been getting. Yes. Yeah. And because uh, actually when you'll see the charts, you'll see Atlas really isn't falling, but it's still hanging down lower than they think it could be. So what we're going to do is do a bunch of specials featuring on individual characters. Cool. Okay. Uh, and the Hercules backups for a few months. And then we're going to launch into a volume three with good. a new number okay. one. And that'll also let people know that they didn't have to, if they weren't following Dark Reign, they don't have to know anything about it because mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with it really. Yeah. You know, it's like we were in it, but it, our concept isn't dependent on Dark Rain. Yeah. So, so well, I was going to say, if, you, if that took another Captain Britain route, I was going to pitch a fit at Marvel. Well, that's, and that's, I think also they're thinking they're about to get their offices stormed. It's like Captain Britain was close enough. They can't do it again. So, yeah. Well, they can. But uh, thank goodness they're, they're actually interested in keeping Atlas going. So, yeah. I'm, I'm happy about that. Now, yeah, it just gives us another chance to grab some more people. I'm really hoping to try to reach out to a lot of – it's always weird to me that some people read Marvel and some people read DC. That's like, I only read Bantam books. I only yeah. read Houghton Mifflin. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't get that at all. I read all of them uh, growing up. But uh, so I think there are a lot of DC readers who don't realize there's something at Marvel they would probably really like. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to get the word out on that, too. Well, one, bi one, one best practice you learned, uh, we were out to dinner the other night with Jimmy Palmiotti, and what he's always seen at successful comic shops is your comics are aligned A to Z. Yes. So when you go, you see Age of you see Amazing Spider-Man, Age of Out. Not DC, just exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, that's the way to go. I don't, I just don't get why people do that. I, 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 I understand historically a lot of people collect like that, but I've been in comic shops too, where I've asked to see. It's like, hey, uh, my book just came out this week, like the Marvel Adventure stuff or something. When yeah. I was doing that, and they said, oh yeah, we've got it, and then they reach under the counter. I went, why isn't it out where people can mm -hmm. see it? You know, it's like. Yeah, you, you can tell they're just reaching out of someone's pull box yeah. or something. And it's like, come on, treat it like a bookstore. And I, I, in Portland, Oregon, where I live, uh, we've got a ton of good shops. We've got Excalibur and Bridge City Comics and Cosmic yeah. Monkey Comics. Yeah. And uh, they all treat their, their stores like just a bookstore. It'd be cool. like if you walked into Barnes & Noble, you know, it's, it's an al alphabetical order. It, pull, it pulls in that audience that they don't get that stigma of a comic shop, you know. They yeah. come in, it's like a bookstore. Yes, yeah, so you can read. Yeah, 